Hey, welcome to the video. My name is Diachronic, and today, taking a look at the Zuri's location and roles, my recommendations for August 19, 2022. Obviously, the last Zur before the new season. And obviously, the new season's right around the corner of August 23rd. You can find the Zur in his regular spot on Nessus. Just head over to the Watcher's Grave, and right over here, next to the edge of this big old bridge, here's the Zur. And this is an overview, in case this is all you cared about. First up today, we have the Crimson Hand Cannon, which honestly is less of a hand cannon and more of a pulse rifle hand cannon. And honestly, probably one of the better PvP weapons in the game. Definitely a very underrated kind of weapon. It's also easier to use, in my opinion, because it's a three-round burst. The range is pretty high, and the Catalyst actually maxes out that range on top of some other stuff. On top of that, you also heal from kills, you get your ammo back from precision kills. It's a very, very good weapon. Up next for the Hunter Exotic, we have the Gemini Jesters, where you're dodging disorients nearby enemies and temporarily removes their radar. And honestly, the disorient thing might work well with Arc 3.0 next season if there are interactions with disorient and the subclass elements but either way this does allow you to turn off people's radars and add a little bit of a flashbang to their screen for a short period of time the main issue is that forces people to put their butt in a corner and that's not how you want them to play and furthermore you do have to use your dogs before battle and not during a battle as far as the role goes you like to see a lot of mobility probably resilience and recovery it has recovering mobility okay but resilience is pretty low 63 is around the average I would recommend, and I guess if it does work with your build. Following that, wow, look at that, a 69. Following that for the Titan exotic, we have the Eternal Warrior, which used to be the poster boy for a terrible exotic, and nowadays is actually a decent option for a swappable. So whenever you're actually using Fist of Havoc, which is something we may end up using more next season, although to be honest, if we have missile available at all times, we may not. But if you do want to use Fist of Havoc, it does give you an overshield, which does have the high resistance of being in your super, which does make you a lot more invulnerable. I would say you might see this a little bit more next season, but I still don't think it's that fun to do because you keep having to go to your inventory to swap to it, and it's like, meh. As far as the role goes, I guess you'd like a lot of intellect because it's super based if you want to use it without your super, but I guess with this particular exotic, you don't care what your stats are because the, what you're going for is going to be a swappable. Furthermore, you have high mobility, which I guess works with the super, a higher resilience, which I guess works with the super, although the recovery is pretty low. But 69 is obviously some of the highest you can get. The highest I've ever received is a 70, and I have not received more than that. Following that, for the Warlock Exotic, we have the Crown of Tempest. Yet again, another arc-based exotic that will probably be doing pretty well next season, where arc ability kills increase the recharge rate of all of your arc abilities and extend the duration of Storm Trance. Again, very very arc based and definitely going to be a very popular option the only issue is that the total of 58 is not very high although i think a few weeks ago we did get one that was like a 70 total and uh i picked that one up and furthermore it's actually one of my favorite looking exotics it's just really good there's a lot of good variations as far as the role goes usually with this exotic you probably see some discipline some strength maybe intellect and with warlocks in general since this is arc I would say probably resilience and recovery. So since this is more of a flat distribution, it might work with your build, but the average is pretty low. After that, let's take a look at the legendary weapons. Last Dance, three burst sidearms, my favorite, although this one can have kill clip and whatnot. It does have range finder, but you definitely do a lot more range and more damage. Following that Whispering Slap, they're going to be buffing lightweight frame bows next season, although you can definitely do better. There are better options. Accuracy is definitely something you want to go for. Nature of the Beast 180 hand cannon, not personally a fan of the 180s, but hip fire and Vorpal are good options for this, although I'd like to see a lot more range and more magazine. We have first in last stout, a slide shot eye of the storm. Not a bad combo, but it could have much better. Salt mag, auto loading, vorpole, definitely better options for PvE at the very least, and PvP as well. After that, Sorrow's Verse, 600 RPM, surplus, and harmony. Actually, a good combination. Has some more mag stuff, reload. Like to see a lot more range, maybe a little stability here. I like 600s in general. Of course, we have the Honor's Edge, which is Relentless Flash Counter. I believe this can do Relentless with something else here that I like better, but I can't remember. After that, we also have the Keening, which again, like I said before, I only really like the three burst and two burst sidearms. I find the rest of them are just not nearly as good, and this combination is also not really that great. After that, for the Titan Armors, again, you'll see your class armors here. They will be different. First up, a 66 High Resilience and Intellect. This is definitely something I recommend. A 60 with Recovery Intellect, a decent option. 62 recovery and intellect again a decent option and 63 with a high resilience and low mobility again a decent option a lot of these are doing really well 
And of course, we also have the exotic weapons. First up for the Hawkmoon today, we have a hipfire grip. And it does not have recoil direction, so not a great combination. Following that, we have DMT with Warple, which is actually a very popular option. It has Hammer Force for range, has Flared Magwell, and also has Short Action Stock. Uh, decent combo. I definitely think that Vorpal and Moving Target are going to be your best options for this weapon. And of course, uh, the Ernamids. <laughs> Uh, and of course, make sure you pick up your little quest here, doing random stuff like the Strikes and Crucible will give you free Exotic Cypher, which is very good and can be spent on Exotic Engrams or whatever you want. And furthermore, Exotic Engrams will always give you something you don't have or give you a very high stat roll. So if you want a very high stat roll, Peregrine at 66, this is where you get them. And of course, a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon. Specifically, a big thank you to Mamlad Pasolan, Zambarks World, Mandy Sabakinus, and New Panther, in case you're for the support on Patreon. And that's it. Hope you guys enjoy. My name is Zachronic, and I'll see you guys on the next one.